My name is Trief Koff. I'm president of our studio, and I do this probably once a year at Uzar just to give people a chance to uh, give people an update on what we've been up to, and then, uh, frankly, hopefully get some questions and have some, uh, some dialogue. There's a lot to cover, so I'm going to try and run through things pretty quickly. Uh, this particular conference was interesting because I, I ended up with a whole bunch of conversations that highlighted that maybe we need to spend a little more time talking about uh, who we are and what we do, which is um, uh, not something that I was planning on. But anyway, so uh, this is our mission. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's aspirational, obviously. And, um, and as you can see by the name of the company, we're very much dedicated to R. We, <laughs> we think that R is a fantastic ecosystem, and we want to make sure that that continues to be a free and open source uh, solution that's available to people regardless of their economic means. And um, so when you look at how we think about the world, we've, we believe that uh, all the work that you do should be reproducible. And that invariably ends up meaning that we believe that it should be in code. And so, sorry? OK, it's not me, right? All right. Whew. I'm like, I can't do anything else. All right, so, um, so we believe in APIs, uh, designing good APIs, trying to figure out what are the ways that make it really easy for the data scientists to get their work um, done. Excellent. That's, I know that's not for me either. I know. I got it. I got it. All right. So 70% uh, of the engineering that we do goes into open source software. And I'll walk you guys through some of the things that we've done. And then uh, and our plan for, for actually, JJ and I met about four and a half years ago. And our plan from day one was to say, OK, in order for this to really work, uh, we need to have a structure, a company that is able to generate enough revenue so that we can hire the top minds, so that they can, you know, top engineers that can actually work on solving these problems, right? And so uh, the, the company itself structurally is designed to make that happen. And, uh, and so what we decided to do is we built these commercial products. We take our server product and we add features and capabilities around them that really uh, uh, are about enterprise fit. So like larger organizations that are already spending a lot of money on IT can go and say, okay, great. If I'm counting on R and I'm counting on Shiny or I'm counting on our studio, um, I have a way to be able to sort of call somebody. But more importantly, maybe is make sure that everything plugs into what I would expect it to plug into within my existing infrastructure. So uh, if we put a lot of features around security, authentication, monitoring, tuning, scaling, metrics, high availability, low balancing, et cetera, these kinds of things. So those of you in the audience who are our customers, thank you very much. The rest of the slides, a lot of the slides I'm going to show you here are only possible because you guys are buying our commercial products. So let me run you through it. First thing I wanted to highlight is we, in the last year, have actually been able to hire a bunch of talent that, is a, that, that can be dedicated to uh, improving uh, R, right? And whether it's in the tidyverse side of the world, we'll talk about tidyverse. Wait, did you guys? OK. Yeah, I think you've lost my audio, right? Test? Yes? OK, good. Um, I swear I have nothing to do with this. Um, and, or uh, engineers on the Shiny team, or frankly, you guys, uh, those of you who were here yesterday could hear Mine talk, you know, uh, get, making sure that we're, we're investing more in education and outreach within the community. So uh, how many people here know about the Tidyverse? OK, so good. I'm not going to explain it. Um, so. <laughs> Um, so the, I'm going to highlight a few things here. So uh, how many people are on the IDE 1.0 or later? OK, those of you who are not on there, I would recommend that you take a look at it. There's uh, all kinds of features around notebooks, data import. Uh, there's a new profiling tool in there. How many people know about the profiler being there? Oh, OK. That's something for you to discover. Um, so if you have slow code and you want to try and figure out why it's slow, we've, we've tried to make life easy, easier for you. In that sense. The other thing that we did, we announced this last year, but I'm guessing, you know, to this, in this uh, uh, trip, I found out that not a lot of people know about this, is, um, you know, there's this thing called Spark, the distributed computing engine, um, you know, lots of hype. Um, and we were hearing from people like, oh, you know, it doesn't work so well with R, we, uh, uh, we have to use Python. So what we ended up doing is, is investing in uh, both on, on creating a package called Sparkly R and in uh, improving the IDE so that the integration is better. And obviously, a ton of time in testing and finding all the edge cases and the things that don't work in Spark and things that don't work properly in Sparkly R, et cetera. So the idea now is, if you guys are interested, I'll have some links at the, at the end. Uh, you, can, you can go in and you can get yourself comfortable with, with R connecting to Spark and leveraging the power of, of Spark without having to give up on R. 
Um, and then here are the packages. The packages I listed here are all packages that were uh, updated or created in the last year. Uh, the ones that are highlighted, the blog down is, is in this color because it's not on CRAN yet. All right. So uh, on the Shiny side, we got to 1.0. I should mention we were on 1.0 in the IDE. We're on 1.0 in Shiny. Uh, obviously, upgrades to Shiny Server itself. Uh, there's a couple new packages that we're working on that are not on CRAN yet. One is Shiny Test. And so one of the big things is people create Shiny applications, and then the organization says, hey, you broke it when you did X or Y or Z. And so we, we've, 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 we recognize that because the background of our community is um, is data scientists, right? They're not software engineers by training, uh, and the tooling is not that great. We're trying to create tooling that make life, makes life easier for folks. Um, and uh, my colleague Barbara talked about pools, so I won't cover that too much. Um, our markdown, there's a new format called Bookdown. How many people have heard of Bookdown? Okay, so Bookdown is a format that makes it easy for you to write books in it. I'll, 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 uh, um, we'll, we'll show you the website that you guys can go to and, and take a look at it and, and play with it. And uh, how many people are familiar with parameterized reports? Okay. Okay, that's what I expected. Uh, so parameterized reports are, you know, you guys are familiar with our markdown docs. You can write our markdown docs. You can actually... If, uh, uh, pass in parameters. If you, if, you, if you write your R markdown doc in a certain way, you can have something in the YAML file that specifies what the parameters are, and then you could render the doc by passing it in the arguments and use those arguments within uh, the report. That allows you to sort of essentially personalize a report if you want to, or reuse the core logic for you know, something like, okay, I, I might run the same report but for this different date range, or run the same report but for, for North America versus South America, whatever, right? So, um, all right, we published a new book, uh, R for Data Science, and when I say we, I don't mean me, I mean Garrett and Hadley, um, and, uh, and you can, if you don't have, are you guys familiar with it? Yes, kind of, sort of, all right, so there's a, you can read it online for free, you can obviously buy it too. Uh, we also have a book on Bookdown. If you go to bookdown.org, you'll actually see that not only do, is there a book on Bookdown, but there are, you know, the R for Data Science book is, is also on there, as well as other people who have published books in there. Um, we continue to have webinars, we have cheat sheets, so I think, I know that people are seeing the cheat sheets. Um, and we had our first RStudio conference in uh, January of this year. The next one is going to be at the end of January, early February. Uh, we, were, like, we, we had a wonderful time. About 400 people managed to show up. And so if you guys are available at the end of January, early February, you're obviously more than welcome uh, to come along. All right. So how we think about data science, you guys may have seen this before. Oops. That, all right. Um, you know, you import data, you tidy the data, you transform the data, you visualize the data, you model the data, and you keep going. And then eventually, the key thing behind doing all data analysis is to communicate, right? And so, <laughs> all right. So, we decided to build a product based on feedback that we got from customers. And just to so be clear, this product is a professional product. And right now, it's only available on premise. But ultimately, in time, we imagine that we will have an on, you know, a, a cloud-based solution that you know, everybody in the community can sort of leverage if they want to, right? But um, and what this product is is aimed at is making it really easy to go from a, from an analysis to being able to sort of share that with the rest of the world. So it's push-button deploy of all the artifacts that you sort of create out of R. Uh, it's an on-premise solution because most of our company customers will not run any of their stuff outside of their firewalls, um, and. Uh, so again, if you want to think about it, you've got, you know, you guys are the creators of, of analyses. You, uh, you may create no, you may have notebooks, you have static docs, you have presentations, you may have parameterized our markdown docs, as I said earlier, you can have shiny applications. And ultimately, your goal is to communicate this to, to somebody, right? Somebody in the organization needs to be able to, to see this. And so we're, we're trying to also build in things like, you know, scheduling. So if you wanted to report to, to run every Monday and email people out or whatever, you can sort of do things like that uh, without having to sort of write your own uh, cron tabs or, you know, have, have a separate system call into it. Now, if you want to, you can absolutely do the same thing. All of the, the foundation of everything that you see here is all open source, right? People can recreate this themselves at any point in time, and I expect that they will. Um, in terms of, so again, creators, there's artifacts, there's consumers, and you guys are all familiar with the, with the, the work of the creator, right? So you you're tidying that, that whole tidy transform visualized model, um, but you also care about reproducibility, you care about collaboration, you care about publishing, you care about protecting, right? So who can see this content, when can they see it, and so on and so forth, right? And then on the consumer side, they want to be able to, to, to get a hold of the data, they want to be able to explore the data, uh, they may want to personalize it, say, let's say, I'm only interested in reports about North America, or I'm only interested in, in sort of like Southern Italy, right? Um, or, um, or they may want to say, okay, I saw, I know I saw, you know, Joe showed me a, a report or a dashboard, I want to see what that looks like today, can I go back and rerun that myself, right? So the idea is, if you You've already built this logic in R. 
we're going to try and make it more and more accessible to the business user. All right, so that's what Connect does. And um, the, you know, we're, we're a, lot of, a lot of our work ends up being providing features to answer questions for the IT organization on why are. Right? The, the, the data scientists are bought in, they use it, they're, they're building really great things, and then they run into these obstacles within the IT organization. So you know, we spend a lot of time trying to say, okay, you know what, here's how you tune this, here's how you monitor this, here's how you scale it. Um, you know, we, you know, I, for Connect, for example, I just spent a pile of cash on an external fir vendor firm, to, security vendor firm to come in and, and validate, make sure that, hey, you know what, you, you know, here are the issues that we found that, that are that is an ind independent person taking a look at that. And so we have a higher bar to cross over because, you know, in, in, for IT, they're very familiar with a Python uh, solution, a Python stack, and uh, in many ways they ask the data scientists in, on the R side to, to, to hold themselves to a higher standard than what, you know, what even, you know, the, the, the rest of the uh, um, organization is held to. But our, our, our job is to hopefully make it easier and easier for that cell to happen. So. Deployment is a push button deployment. We, we, we identify dependencies. You know, we use, you know, we use Packrat underneath the hood. Uh, we match up our versions to the best of our abilities. And, um, and so the idea is get, get more of these uh, uh, artifacts to be published quickly. Um, the, the reports, all the reporting is based on our markdown, so it's completely reproducible. You can schedule it, you can email it, you know, ultimately in time you can imagine that you can also have that like, drop into a location on disk or drop into Confluence. Um, and, um, uh, or, or potentially uh, like send a Slack message or whatever, right? And, and you can customize, you, you can give the end user the opportunity to sort of customize the, the report that they see based on the parameters that they're interested in. And obviously it can do everything around uh, hosting shiny applications. So generally, architecturally, this is what it looks like. You know, you've got the data, data scientist uh, publishing on one side, you've got the end users sort of interacting with it as a web browser. They don't know that they're talking to anything that is R related. Um, and um, all right, so useful websites, shiny.rstudio.com. I'm guessing everybody here knows um, uh, about it. Our markdown at rstudio.com, everybody? Yes? No? Kind of? All right. You guys are falling asleep on me. db.rstudio.com is a new website. It's talking about, like, it's, it's, we're trying to capture all the things that are related to sort of connecting from R to the database. Um, spark.rstudio.com is the same kind of thing, but for Spark. Um, Bookdown, we've talked about a little bit, and... Um, and if you wanted to play with Connect, we, you can, without downloading it, there's an eval that you can download and, and run it, but if you wanted to just play with it and see what the end user experience is like, you won't see all the features because it's a, it's a common shared uh, infrastructure, but it'll give you a feel for like, what you can publish, how you can schedule, et cetera. So you can go to Beta Studio Connect and just log in with your Google Auth. All right, so with that, how many minutes do I have? Two and a half minutes. Questions? Concerns? Nothing? I can't actually see if there are any hands up. All right. That's it. That's all I had. Thanks, guys. <laughs>